Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the forgiveness Christ has won for you by his passion, death, and resurrection. By the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, as a called and ordained servant of the word, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son to proclaim your kingdom and to teach with authority. Anoint us with the power of your Spirit, that we too may bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning and welcome to worship. Please indicate your presence here this morning by using the QR code that you'll find on the back of the bulletin or use one of the cards in the rack in front of you that says we're glad you're here. Please place those cards in one of the offering baskets on either end of your pew. A new small group is starting right around the, the bend on the 30th. It'll meet on Sunday evenings. It's going to study the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel is an incredible book. It's part of the apocalyptic literature in Holy Scripture. I commend that opportunity to you. There's a unique ministry that we're looking for people that have uh, some talent or uh, perhaps want to grow in their talent in the area in terms of putting together some toys, some wooden toys. These would be um, rocking chairs, little wooden toys for children. Uh, instructions are included. Um, it's going to be a group uh, process and those toys are going to be given to uh, folks that come into the Mid-Cities Women's Clinic that we help uh, to support. So please notice the announcement and uh, check that out and we hope that you will participate. Next Sunday is our semi-annual meeting uh, at 1215 here in the sanctuary. We're going to celebrate God's grace in 2021 and look forward to that which God will do in 2022. I commend you the rest of the announcements. We continue with the anthem for the morning. Though I speak with tongues of angels, though my voice is touched with gold, without love each word is discord, clanging brass and cymbals bold. Though I know as much as Jealous, boastful, rude, neither 
Our first reading is from the book of Nehemiah, the eighth chapter. All the people gathered together in the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was on the first day of the seventh month, he read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We share from Psalm 19 responsively. The heavens are telling the glory of God. Day to day pours forth speech. There is no speech, nor are there words. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth.
Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Christ. Please be seated. Open your Bibles, please, with me to Mark, the third chapter for our study today, page 32, if you're using a copy of the scriptures in the pew. Mark, the third chapter for our study this morning. The perfect family. The perfect family. When I say that, what what images come to mind? If you had to paint a a picture of the perfect family. How do you see them relating to one another? How do you see the conversation between the members of the family? What actions do you do you see? What what commitments of time are given? The perfect family. You know, if you think of perfect families, certainly Jesus' family had to be perfect, right? Had to be perfect. Now, on the one hand, Mary and Joseph really wasn't quite fair because one of their children were sinless, right? So that's going to help along those matters of the perfect family. But when you conjure up the images of the holy family, Mary and Joseph adoring over the baby, Jesus' brothers and sisters, certainly supportive of Jesus throughout his ministry. Why, when you think of the perfect family, certainly, you have to think of Jesus' family, don't you? The perfect family. 
Well, not so fast, right? Not so fast. When we study in the Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Mark has what's called oftentimes an ABA structure. In fact, one of the things I hope that you'll see as we study several portions of Mark over these months is this ABA structure. Now, what's the ABA structure? More than any other gospel, you will see in the Gospel of Mark the introduction of a, of a topic. You'll see characters. You'll see a plot line. And then all of a sudden, before that is resolved, Mark will go on to another story. Interject other characters, another plot line, and then he'll return to that original story. That literary technique here, inspired by the Holy Spirit, helps to communicate the action nature of the gospel. And it's a structure we're quite familiar with, right? When, when you watch a show on television, you'll see the ABA structure all the time. There'll be a scene, there'll be characters, there'll be the plot line that in, is injected there, and then all of a sudden the next scene, you, you'll see a whole different plot line come in, whole other characters. And you say, well, well what, what happened to that first issue here, that first scene? How did that ever resolve? And then later in the show, they'll come back to that, and then they'll resolve that scene. That's the ABA structure. You see it throughout the Gospel of Mark. Example is Jairus. Jairus had a daughter that was at the point of death. Jairus goes to Jesus. Jairus is requesting that Jesus heal his daughter. Then all of a sudden Mark goes into the story about the woman with the hemorrhages. You say, well, well how did that resolve? And then Mark comes back to the story Turns out the girl had died. Jesus comes, raises her from the dead. There's the ABA structure. Same thing with our text for today. Same thing. A story is told. Another story comes in. Then you've got the resolution of the original story. Look at it with me, please. Verse 31. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. Scripture reveals that Jesus had four brothers. He had at least two sisters. We don't know what the names of the sisters are. They're not recorded in Scripture. But we know he had at least two because it refers to sisters in the plural. So he's got four brothers and he's got two sisters. The only way to understand verse 31 and what's going on is if you go back to the A part of the story, which is up in verse 20. Then he went home and the crowd came together again so they could not even eat. And verse 21 is the key. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. Then all of a sudden, Mark goes on to a whole different tangent, brings in a whole different plot line, a whole different story, then he comes back to it. Verse 31, then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. So to understand verse 31, you have to go back to the first part of the story, which is in verse 21. Of why his mother and brothers went to see him. Look again at verse 21. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him... For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. That word there literally means, Jesus has gone crazy. That's what they're saying. Or you can translate it, Jesus is out of it. Now we know that Mary believed in Jesus as the Savior as the Messiah. We know that. But his brothers? 
His brothers? Scripture tells us in John the seventh chapter, for not even his brothers believed in him. In fact, it wasn't until after the resurrection where you see the entire family unit existing at the time, the entire family unit who understood who Jesus was and why he had come. Acts, the first chapter. All of these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. So did the brothers come to the understanding that Jesus was the Messiah? Absolutely. Here? They think he's crazy. They think he's crazy. And they go to restrain him. Then his mother and his brothers came and standing outside they sent to him and called him. You understand 31 in light of 21. When his family heard it they went out to restrain him for people were saying he's gone out of his Did Jesus understand the blessing of family? Of course he did. Scripture reveals that Jesus was obedient to his parents. Luke, the second chapter. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. What did Jesus say from the cross? But he provided for his mother. He turned to John and said, Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Jesus understood the blessing of family. But was Jesus' family the perfect family? Was it the perfect family? (laughs) Look at verse 32. A crowd was sitting around him and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. Jesus knows exactly why they've come. And notice what's emphasized. Where where are the brothers and the sisters and Mary? Where are they? They're on the outside. Who's on the inside? Those on the inside are those that are listening to Jesus. You see, his family has taken the position of the hostile authorities that we see in Scripture on the outside. A portrait of perfection? Hardly, hardly. But this isn't the only family that Jesus has, is it? I think of Galatians, the third chapter. There the scripture says, for in Christ you you are all children of God through faith. In Christ, you're all children of God through faith. What was the hymn that we sang just before the sermon? Children of the Heavenly Father, right? Growing up in the congregation when I was a boy in California, the congregation we attended, it was a tradition of that congregation that before every single baptism, that hymn was sung. So you knew, if you looked in the bulletin there or when the organist started to play the intro, you knew that there was a baptism that day. Children of the heavenly Father. Scripture tells us in John 1, but to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. Romans 8. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. When we cry, Abba, Father, it's that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children 
of God. 1 John 3, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. We are part of Jesus' other family. We're part of Jesus' other family. Look back at the text, verse 33. Right after Jesus' mother and brothers show up, and specifically his brothers show up to restrain him. Right after Jesus is told that his family is on the outside there and they're calling for him, verse 33, and he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. When God comes and gives us faith, by his gracious action, that faith then expresses itself. Can't help but express itself. Paul writes in Philippians 2, he says, For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. When Jesus turns and says, And, and, and who's my family? And he's referring to those that are around him. You see, these then are people of faith that do his will. Faith, Luther said, an active and busy thing. Where faith is present, there will be works. Not to earn salvation, it's simply an expression of faith. Where faith exists, faith will express itself. It expresses itself in doing the will of the Father. We are part of his other family. And are we the perfect family? Are we the perfect family? A cursory glance answers that question, doesn't it? For like Jesus' brothers, we can so often be confused about the mission of Christ. We can think that Jesus came to make our life easier. That that's why he came. And if our life isn't easy, then Jesus must not be true. He must just not be God. He must not be in control. Because after all, Jesus came to make my life, how we look at it, easier. And like the brothers, we can misunderstand, misunderstand the mission of Christ. like the brothers of Jesus, we can sometimes think God's just crazy. Just crazy. I mean, why doesn't God do what God should do according to our timetable and how we've mapped it out? God is just crazy. Why doesn't he just do what I've told him? I've worked it out. Just pull the lever, God. So often, we can be like that first family on the outside instead of being the listeners on the inside. Because we can be tempted to just want to hear our own thoughts, our own beliefs. 
We just want to hear the echo of our own mind from the lips of the other. And so instead of being on the inside, listening to what God says, we move to the outside and we search for someone to tell us what we want to hear. Hmm. We can so often act more like the unbeliever than the believer. We are part of God's family, <laughs> his other family. The perfect family? Hmm. But in God's eyes, in God's eyes, Scripture tells us in Isaiah 61, he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him, Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. Philippians 3. Found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. The Lord Jesus Christ going to the cross and taking our sin and paying the sin debt and then giving to us his righteousness. Washing us and clothing us in his righteous, perfect life. So that when God looks at us, he sees the perfection of Jesus. When he looks at us, he sees the perfection of Jesus. God sees the perfect family. And it's us. It's us. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please be seated.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Sovereign God, thank you for your word given to us as Holy Scripture, the sure foundation for life as your beloved community. Thank you for your word made flesh in your Son, Jesus Christ. Conform our lives to his. Send us with your word to all who are blinded by distractions, deafened by voices of pleasure and power, lamed by suffering, imprisoned by sin, and impoverished in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we thank you that you see us in the perfection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for making us your perfect family. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, we thank you for blessing us today with the nourishment of your word and sacrament. Use your gifts of grace to strengthen our faith and embolden us to enter into this new week with your love in our hearts and your mercy on our lips. Lord, in your mercy. Saving God, we ask that your comfort and healing be with Rick and Sylvia Render, Holly Gayfeller, the Neeland family, Lori Bird, the Albergate family, Bob and Dee Hansen. Be with all who grieve, especially Kathy Burgess, her son Scott and family, as they mourn the death of Kathy's daughter-in-law, Carla. Into your hands, Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your goodness and mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are all invited to this table of grace.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ now strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and to be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you of his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, serve the Lord.